Oh wow! Hi everybody. Uh, a good evening to you, or a good morning, or a good afternoon, depending where you are tuned in from. It is really such a privilege uh, being with you on this amazing Tuesday. Uh, for this is the day the Lord has made. We shall be glad and rejoice in it. I'm sure many of you are surprised. Like, where has she been? <laughs> Well, we are a family right here at God's Heart Our Mission. I trust that you've enjoyed the times that you've spent in the company of our Pastor Renatio Niabat. Uh, he is actually the one um, yeah, that is teaching on the Word of God, that is that has been ministering into your hearts uh, for the last couple of Tuesdays. But I have to say that it is really just such a privilege being in your company. Uh, this amazing... Uh, Tuesday evening, Tuesday morning, Tuesday afternoon. I thank you so much that you could actually tune in. I trust that the God of glory will minister into your heart on that which he has laid into my heart on this amazing day. But before I commence with our with my teaching for the uh, for the evening, I really just want to take this moment to pray uh, and just invite the Holy Spirit to take over. Just really to, ten, to thank God. For such a time as this he is doing amazing things god is working everything out for the good of those that actually love him and have been called according to his purpose so would you join me and stand in agreement by faith from wherever you are tuned in from as we pray so that we can actually start uh, on today's broadcast the message that i have in my heart to share with you on this amazing beautiful day let us pray Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. This is the day you've made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Heavenly Father, ask that whatever I minister, Lord God, that which comes out of my mouth, may it come directly from heaven, may it be inspired by your Holy Spirit, Lord. May I speak out of your wisdom and not mine. May I have um, revelation and insight, Lord God, from that which you have laid in my heart. I ask that each and every person that is under the sound of my voice and those that are going to be tuned in in the near future, Lord God, may you minister into their hearts. May they be richly blessed. May you pour out your spirit, Lord God, on all flesh as your word says. And I ask that you be, um, you continue to move, Lord God, and stretch forth your hand of favor each and every, over each and every person that is listening and those that are going to be tuned in, Lord. Lord God, may they be richly blessed by your word tonight. And I pray all of this in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And the people of God said, Amen and Amen. So, it is a beautiful Tuesday. May I just remind you, my beautiful people, that we are holidays are fast approaching, right? Isn't that exciting times? Christmas is around the corner. Isn't that exciting? We are going to be celebrating the birth of Christ Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We are going to be celebrating the time that we've just spent, you know, together as family members. I'm sure some of you probably haven't even seen your family members in the longest time, but be encouraged that God is, is making those plans happen for you on your behalf. He's working miracles behind the scenes. And uh, yeah, exciting days are coming. It is the season of giving of your time, of your resources, of whatever it is that God lays in your heart. Won't we just go out there and be a blessing to uh, our community members, to our friends, to our families, to our colleagues, to everybody. You know, it's time to just spread that love um, I'm so privileged I, I have to say that I even woke up this morning it is nothing but a miracle that we get to enjoy this time together because really uh, each day is in itself a present and that's why we need to be present on the day so that we can enjoy the day because God is the one that makes that day possible but even the Bible tells us that tomorrow is not guaranteed so I trust that you're excited as I am that the festive season is uh, around the corner and we'll be celebra celebrating the birth of Christ Jesus you know um, I know you know the bars and I mean I've been to a couple of malls already and I see everybody just shopping and shopping and shopping and this you can tell that definitely it is that time of the year but in all of that we also need to remember the whole point of why we do celebrate Christmas we celebrate it because of Christ Jesus that, that God gifted unto this world so that you and I may be, may be redeemed so that you and I may be blessed uh, as he um, had become the ultimate atonement uh, so that you and I may have eternal life only provided that you believe in him and him only as the son of God of the true living God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob nonetheless welcome to this segment of God's Hara mission thank you so much I am Taban Sakaichu I will be with you tonight bringing you word yes it is the Tuesday and you know how we do so you know I was just trying to figure out God what would you want me to say 
to your children from across the globe what message uh, would you like me to share with them on this beautiful evening that you've given us and um, I just kept thinking of delay 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 and I was like oh well it's no wonder that God is probably uh, well prompting in my spirit for me to teach about uh, delays and I called it blessed delays because I really truly believe that um, there is always a blessing in every delay that one experiences in life. And I've heard a lot of my friends, you know, I've been at home recently in the beautiful province of Northwest. Oh, Cape Town is also my home, but you know, I moved between two provinces. And a lot of people were complaining about how they feel like they don't know what they, what happened in 2020 in their lives. In 2021, they feel like they have achieved nothing. There's just been delays after delays after delays. They had plans worked out. Some of them wanted to move to new places. Some of them were expecting for new jobs. I'm one of those that was supposed to be in Egypt in 2020, but because of the Rona, I couldn't make it. But nonetheless, God worked everything out for my good, and he will do the same for each and every person. He is no respecter of persons. So that was, I guess, why you know he tugged it in my spirit to teach that tonight is because of the fact that I saw a lot of discourage and a lot of um, sort of like hopelessness and just some sort of lack of zest as one would always have you know around this time normally uh pre-rona uh, there would just be this mood of excitement of the new year new plans are being made new resolutions are being made people are thinking oh wow what a wonderful 2021 we've had and now we're looking forward for 2022 and they are looking for opportunities and ways on how they can better themselves for some weird reason, 2020 and 2021 has got the flip side of everything. Everybody's just thinking, we're just not sure what, what are we supposed to be looking forward to, you know, should we even really be excited? So many of my plans have been delayed, you know, a lot of people are probably thinking right now, so many of my plans I've had to abandon, there's just so much I've had to put on hold because of the situation that we find ourselves on this earth, but I'm here tonight. I am here tonight to encourage you that you need not despair, do not lose hope, do not be discouraged because here's the beauty of everything although you might have experienced delay although you must have experienced an uncomfortable shift or redirection or rerouting whatever it is that you might have experienced know and understand that there's a blessing behind that delay everything that has happened from the time i'm going to speak particularly in relation to the pandemic because everything is around that as, soon as we speak but i'm going to speak as the spirit leads Everything that you've experienced during the period, you know, of of pro pro Rona and now the Rona, the Rona are doing whatever it's doing across the globe. Understand and know that the promises of God for your life they still stand. You are not delayed. That which you're expecting from God is not delayed, and it doesn't mean that God have has squandered that plan or if He's decided to throw everything out. No, He has not decided to do that. God is still going to bring to pass everything that he has planned for your life every single thing that god has as his will for your life from tonight until whenever it pleases him is going to come to pass because god is not one to change his mind god does not get swayed by circumstances that you and i can be swayed by god is not one who is to uh to lie you know he's not man he's not human that he should lie he's spirit god is the god of truth he's the god who is faithful he is one whose word is alive and active when it goes forth it does exactly that which he commands for it to do so i want to encourage you tonight that you might have experienced delay yes you might be a little frustrated yes you might be disappointed yes we are people we are allowed to have those emotions but i don't want you to go through the emotions from a place of despair or discouragement or even having your faith a little bit swayed because bottom line is remember that uh, without faith it is impossible to to please God so he still expects us because he's the God who is steadfast he is God who is true he is God who was the same yesterday today and forever forevermore he will not he will not change his mind about the plans that he has for your life he is not saying no to anything in fact he's gonna work out this delay for your own good you'll be so surprised at that which is gonna come from this delay it's gonna be such an immense blessing that you'll be able to use that to be a blessing unto other people so i'm just here to say that remain true to the word of god remain connected to the god of glory do not look to the left to the right stay rooted in christ jesus because he will bring forth that 
which he has put into motion he is putting his angels charge over each and everything that is in your life and he is even fighting battles that you do not know of so firstly i'm gonna go through some pointers which god laid into my heart for me to share with you just to remind you that why is it sometimes a blessing actually when the delay happens and we should learn you know as Christians as brothers and sisters in the Lord that whatever we look at we have to maintain a godly perspective and have revelation and deeper understanding as to why God does or allow for certain things to happen in our lives and we ought to remember that although the delay might be uncomfortable and we are human beings I don't like delays you know i will i will be first to admit i don't have time for delays if anything i i, I don't like it i don't like waiting i don't want to hang around i don't not, not, like none of that like i don't want to be late for anything i want everything like right on time you know god is working on that please pray for me my people <laughs> work in progress okay we're not called to be perfect for we've been perfected in christ jesus but we are called to be obedient the bible verse that i love which is one of the points that god laid in my heart is that God is patient with us, you know. Second uh, Peter three eight nine says, "But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping His promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance." In the context under which I'm sharing this message with you tonight. Here's the part I want you to take away from this amazing verse is that, yes, God is definitely patient with us. He expects us to be patient with him, but we can do that because patience is one of the fruits of his Holy Spirit. But remember that although you might have experienced the delay, to God, a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day. That which you feel has been delayed, that which you feel you might have lost out on or lost track of or whatever the situation may be, understand that he can uh, restore that in minutes, in a day, in hours. With God, nothing is impossible. So although you might feel a little frustrated by that, I want to encourage you to stand fast and be steadfast on this word. Stand on this word and believe it and appropriate it for yourself and your family members tonight to say that it's okay for me to be patient although things are not going in the direction that I would want or at the speed that you might have expected however learn to practice a bit of patience knowing that God is working everything out uh, behind the scenes for you and understand that even though it might have maybe been a delay of six months or even a year or even longer than that to God a day is like a thousand years that is a huge comparison you might say like but that's a bit like exaggerated no it's not exaggerated he was able to create the earth and the heavens you and me and everything in between within seven days so really a day uh, it's like a thousand years a thousand years like a day is nothing by far in creating all that which we marvel at in six days so it is true if he can do that in six days imagine what he can do in a day or in a th you know in a day or in a minute or in a second whatever you might be hoping for it could literally be like a phone call away it could be the next trip that you take it could be the next place that you step into it could be the next room that you are seated at you just will never know but God would expect us to remain faithful we have to continue to trust in him and rest our hope in him and practice patience it could be one of those things that he probably wants to uh, to bring about or bring from inside of you but he's using that experience for you to learn to be a bit patient look I feel like that's where me and God always have a sit down when it comes to patience because I suck at that but it's all right work in progress I'm, I'm getting there I'm getting there slowly but surely my significant other always says you need to be a little patient you need to be a little patient I feel like God is using him <laughs> <laughs> to remind me to be a little patient and it's okay it's good there's nothing wrong with that um, but look the Holy Spirit will teach you all things so be encouraged tonight so this point number one that I really wanted to share with you tonight is that be patient with God it delays not denial he's not saying no to anything all he's saying that be a little patient because I can promise you whatever it is that is on the other side of the delay it's going to blow your mind and then another point that I wanted to raise is that there is also a purpose behind everything that happens, right? So there is a purpose and a plan behind that delay. Simply because God is the one that directs everything. He directs my steps, 
and yours. Proverbs 16.9 says this so beautifully. In their hearts, humans plan their course. Ooh, I love that. In their hearts, humans, you and me, plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. He, God could be using that delay to be able to establish your steps in a new direction. The one that he wants you to be at, the one that is appropriate for you, the one that is according to his will for your life. So don't don't shun at the delay. Don't lose hope at the delay. Don't feel uneasy about it. It's simply because God might be using that delay so that he can redirect you. Remember, the most important thing when you journey with God is to always remain in prayer. The reason for that is because when you are in prayer, you get to continuously check in with God. You are literally having that plug you know, in on the things of God, he's able to minister into your heart. And as you pray, sometimes you feel like you're taking the correct step or making the right decision or, or, or whatever it may be. But don't find that is not in his will for your life. But you had prayed that you want to do his will. But then you still take the wrong step. But we are human beings, right? Yep, yep. There's no Jesus here on this earth. He's seated on the right hand side of the Father. Mm. He's alive and well. He's in you and me. But we can have human error. We are human beings after all. Sometimes you can think that you're hearing from God, but actually you are not. You know, and then you actually make the wrong decision or you take the wrong step. So when God redirects you, he or when he causes a delay rather it could simply mean that he is redirecting you so that he's able is able to establish your steps appropriately so that you are still in alignment with the will for your life so it is so important to always pray pray and seek god in everything invite him whether you're starting a new business whether you're deciding to leave your job, whether you're deciding to leave your significant other, whether you're deciding to get married, have children, whatever it is, even the hairstyle that you want to do, man, I suggest you talk to God about it. He will be able to actually establish your steps and you'll be able to direct where he wants you to go. So the delay could simply mean God is busy redirecting you, but he will redirect you into the place that you had initially wanted to go. But because we live in this world and we know the ruler of this world is very busy, the, the gods of this dark kingdom are trying to insert, intercept everything that is to do with us wanting to see forth the will of the Father for our lives. So a delay, again, it is a blessing in the sense that while you might be delayed, God might be actually correcting you and redirecting you so that he's able to move you in the way that he wants you to go so that you are able to do that which he wants you to do. Another point I want to raise tonight about why there's always a blessing in delay and do not despise it when you have been delayed. It could simply mean that you need to wait for God's timing. I've had to learn that the hard way. Oh my God, mm, it was rough. I had to learn that the hard way that God's timing is the best. When I decided to do what I want to do when I wanted to do it, it got rough. I'm not going to try and polish that one. It got very rough. And I still had to go back to God anyway and be like, okay, God, I'll let you then take the wheel. Don't go my route. Allow God to take the wheel from, this, from, from, from the onset. Sometimes the delay is caused by the fact that we need or we need to be taught to wait for God's timing. Ecclesiastes 3.1 says, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the sun. That includes every single thing that is to do with your life, every single aspect of your life. It, is, uh, uh, it has a season for it. There is an, <laughs> a period on allocation assigned for that. So you are important to God. You matter to God. Everything that happens in your life is a big deal to God because he has called you for his purpose he has plans for you to prosper you and not to harm you he knew you while you knew your mother's womb he knows the number of hairs that you have on your head so he created you because you are fearfully and wonderfully made and your whole point as to why you are here is to accomplish his will as he did command for christ jesus to do so understand and know that in everything his timing is always the best 
I've had to learn that the hard way because I knocked my head against the wall and then I bounced back straight to the cross. I would, I was supposed to have gone to the cross, right? And sometimes we tend to do that as Christians, yeah? We go to the cross and we agree with God that God, you take the wheel. But then we try to kind of like micromanage, you know, be like, you know, God, you know, I've handled this part, you handle that. Not a good idea. <laughs> Give it to God and stay put. But remain in prayer and be tuned into the Holy Spirit so that you can hear the instruction and the direction that he wants you to, to go. And when, when there's the time, he wants you to do what he wants you to do. And you will know, provided that you remain plugged in. God never promised, no way in the Bible does God promise that our life would be easy, you know, just be living a bit of loca and just be on a holiday back to back, no. But he did say that everything that we experience in life will have a season and it will have a time frame. And if you read further in Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 3, right? If you read further from chapter 2 to 8, it will say there's a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. Everything it has got a time allocated for it, it has a period, it has a time span. Everything in your life, every single thing, you know, because when God created you, he placed in you. You know, I love that verse that says, he who has begun a good work inside of you will see it to completion. In all of that, there's time frames in my life and yours. So it's important for us to understand that although there might be a delay, it's not a denial. God is not saying no. The timing might be off. And he's waiting as he's rearranging each and everything that's going to be at play for that which he wants to see manifest into your life according to his will and not yours. Because when you bring in your will, you might look like everything is in order only to find that nothing is definitely in order. So I'd like to encourage you to remain patient. i like to encourage you to allow God to lead because even the Bible tells us that we have to be in step with the Holy Spirit. Allow the Holy Spirit inside of you to lead you and allow for God to direct you and to establish your steps while you're experiencing the delay. Another point I want to mention is that while you are at it in this whole balloon of delay, you need as people, you know, as those uh, who believe in Christ Jesus to live for today. We need to be present, you know. I mean, with, with Corona, a lot of people have sort of like just been floating, you know, that whole thing of, I just have to survive today, so long as I just survive today. No, we don't serve a God who is always on, I need to survive for today. We serve a God who is eternal, one who made the heavens and the earth and everything in between. He expects us to be present because he says, this is the day, the day the Lord has made. We shall be glad and rejoice in it while we're experiencing the delay. Proverbs 27, 1 says, Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring. So while you are waiting for a delay and so focused on, Oh my goodness, God, you need to make this happen like now, like tomorrow, like yesterday already, you're going to miss out on the miracle of today. Rather, focus on being present so that you can enjoy the day that the Lord has made because in itself it is a gift. You don't know that although there might be a delay yesterday, for tomorrow is not guaranteed. That's why God expects us to not boast about tomorrow for we don't know what it's going to bring, but to rather rejoice always in the day that the Lord has made and be present for it is a gift. The important thing is to recognize when you wake up in the morning that we only have God to thank for that. We don't wake ourselves up. It's His Spirit that lives in us, that is here to help us to accomplish the will of the Father that wakes you up in the morning so that you are able to do what He assigned you or what He's predestined for you to do on the next 24 hours. Life is very fragile, we've come to understand, with 
the whole corona coming in that just how fragile and how precious life is so we need to also understand that in the delay god might be teaching us that we need to live for today we need to be present on the business of the day so we can fully accomplish the will that he has for that day you know there's this whole thing this very broad concept of the will of the father we forget to understand that every second that we live every minute that you and i breathe we have to accomplish the will of the father each and every second of each and every day it's not like doing the will of the father and it's a far-fetched concept no it's now as i'm speaking to you right now i need to have checked in with god that am i still in alignment am i still tuned in am i still uh in alignment with that which he has uh lined up for me to do that which he has predestined for me to do so that's point number four that we need to live for today and enjoy today celebrate today be excited and be present be fully fully present uh, on the gift of today and while you're experiencing the delay be encouraged that uh, God has given you um, his, his, his plan to give you hope and a future Jeremiah 29 11, 12 says for I know the plans I have for you declares the lord you should already just right there just just close the bible and you're done for the day that is such a load that is such a powerful verse one of the most powerful verses in the bible for i know the plans i have for you already that should give you comfort that yes god there is a delay i don't like it i wish it, i don't have to go through it but i know i know like i know like i know like i know that you've got plans for me declares the Lord. He says, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. Yes, you can talk to God while you're experiencing the delay about your frustrations. I do that all the time. I mean, I made it, I made it very clear to God that I'm not happy, that I have to be delayed. I don't like it. I'm not comfortable with it, but yet, yet I'm thankful because i know i may not understand half the time i never understand what god is up to i get to find out while i'm at it you know faith um but understand and know that in that delay he's not planning to do you in god is planning to prosper you you know that still remains it's not going to harm you the delay won't harm you you know he's there to give you hope and a future and when you call on him and you pray to him he says I will listen to you. So it's okay to speak to God. Be frank with God. You know, just be direct with God and let him know whatever it is that you may be experiencing. But do it from a place of thanksgiving. He says we are to enter his courts with thanksgiving in our hearts. There's nothing wrong with talking to God and praying to God and engaging with God. That's what we're supposed to do for we've been adopted as uh, his daughters and sons into the kingdom of God. We, we have the birthright to do so we are coerced with christ jesus the author and finisher of our faith there's nothing wrong with talking to god he has created that plan for you there's nothing wrong to talk with god because he's the one who says i have plans for you i have predestined works for you so if you don't understand what god is doing it's great talk to god seek his face if you want to he will give you peace which surpasses all understanding he's able to reveal that which you are asking about that particular delay but don't do it from a place of agitation like i do do it from a place of thanksgiving and let him know that god i thank you for this delay i thank you for this delay i recognize it but i know that you've got plans for me and i'm going to be comforted by that you've got plans to prosper me and you've got plans to give me a future you've got plans to give me a hope so be encouraged by that and let us learn to submit our expectations under the Lord and be excited about that which God is doing even if it's a little uncomfortable God is a good God he doesn't do anything that is not good that's why he works everything out even if it's meant for your evil he will work it out for your good so a delay doesn't mean God is not going to do it or he stepped out of the building he hasn't gone anywhere he says I'll never leave you nor forsake you he's got in many world he's going nowhere he's God with us all he's saying is could be some of these things that I've mentioned, but you have to discern what God is doing in the backdrop and you can actually do that. And while you're experiencing this blessed delay and God is doing amazing things on your behalf, wait quietly. Oh man, you know, as human beings, we love complaining. Complaining is like 
we just do that we just love complaining we complain about the weather we complain about the birth that's singing we complain about our neighbor we can complain that's just one thing human beings are really really good at it's a struggle but one that we can overcome lamentations 3 uh, from verse 25 to 26 says the Lord is good to those whose hope is in him to those who seek him it is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord so while you wait do so quietly from a place of rest basically this is what I believe this amazing scripture is saying while you put your hope in the Lord be still and give it all to God and understanding that he is God after all he is the one that is in control so even in that delay God is in control so it is important for us to rest our hope in him to place our trust on him and to wait quietly stand still and know that the Lord of glory the God of glory is still seated on his throne celebrate that delay because God is doing miraculous things for you on your behalf for his purpose for the will that he has placed upon you for the good works that is predestined for you to do and while you are waiting point number seven my last point is that we need to always submit to the father proverbs 3 verse 5 to 6 says trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways submit to him and he will make your paths straight so beautiful isn't it and that's where it's at you know here's where i want to sit a little bit in that whole scripture it's like it's really speaking about delay and how to manage it on a day-to-day -day practical sense right all i'm saying by be thinking okay Tabang, that's great from a theological point try and put that in the practical it's not that easy i agree with you it's not that easy correct when we get anxious we panic we worry we are human beings we get all those things but here's where it goes the delay becomes I believe manageable when we put this piece of scripture into practice basically trusting the Lord with all your heart in or amid that delay and not leaning on our own understanding basically looking at circumstances and as the way they present uh, they present themselves to us and our intellectual understanding or interpretation of that which we gather from what we see right um, will actually lead us to rely on our own understanding but the verse here tells us not to lean on our own understanding because our understanding as human beings when it is not powered by the holy spirit is not coming from the understanding of the holy spirit it is not spiritually discerned it can be very easy for us to misread misinterpret uh anything that could be happening in our lives because with with the understanding of the Holy Spirit comes the revelation and that's where we need to be at right when we do in life with the Holy Spirit we need to rely on God's understanding God's perspective God's wisdom and not our own because that can be misleading that can be deceiving that can really throw us off like completely to our own detriment that's why the, the verse continues to say in all our ways we ought to submit to God and he will make our paths straight in that way we can avoid to going through in a zigzag motion but go straight to where god wants us to be but this has to come from a place of submission which is a place of obedience and a place of humility and that's what god wants god wants us to operate from a place of humility we have to submit ourselves under the mighty hand of god and you know what i love this scripture so much is is that also when because we are human beings and we are structured in a certain way when we rely on the flesh and its fleshly attributes which is limited understanding and uh, somehow um, altered way of thinking when you lean on your own understanding there's a level of arrogance and pride that comes into that because now with your IQ and your level of understanding you gather what you need to gather and then you make decisions based on that which your intellectual mind teaches you or tells you and God doesn't like an arrogant heart he doesn't like he hates pride with a passion and that's why immediately after that verse when it says in all your ways submit to him it's speaking from a place of humility pride gotta go arrogance gotta go your intellectual iq and your experience coupled with all of that uh it, it has to go you need to submit yourself under god so that he is able 
to make your paths straight from a place of obedience and from a place of humility. You can't rely on your own understanding because then you make that as your mini god, your intellectual ability or your IQ or your education, social status, whatever you might call it. And God doesn't have time for those things. God is spirit. So everything we do, we have to do in spirit and in truth. That's why we are called to worship him in that way. Um, and that's why everything to do with the spirit has to be spiritually discerned. So the mind will tell you the one thing. That's why you have to also, the Bible tells us to make it um, obedient, to make, take thought of every take captive of every thought and make it obedient to Christ. That is speaking to submission. Your thoughts have to be submitted under Christ because even God says, my thoughts are higher than yours and my ways are higher than yours because God is spirit. God is a very powerful spirit. He's all the all supreme spirit and you want that by your side. Uh, so that for us to remain under the will of the Father and for us to remain uh, in alignment with that which has called us for we have to learn to practice the seven attributes that I've mentioned or the seven ways or aspects that I've been discussing with you tonight but I'm just here to discuss them. there's plenty more that you can put in practice but I'm just here tonight to encourage you you know to put those into practice by faith and trusting God you know um, manage this delay that you, you you don't really lose sight of the wonders that God is doing in your life and that you don't get derailed by what you see and what you think you see between what is because really everything starts in the spirit so again let's learn to be patient while we are experiencing that season of delay let us learn to understand that God is the one that directs our path and is the one that establishes our steps. Let us not forget that only in his timing will that which he wants to see forth be manifested and it will be, without a shadow of doubt, be for your own benefit. His timing and not ours. Again, speaking to humility. Let us live for today. Let us not take this day for granted. We've come to understand, looking at the stats each and every day, how the Rona be just ravaging the world appreciate today appreciate the time that you spend with your loved ones with your family with your friends because today is indeed a gift it has always been it will always be because the bible reminds us that tomorrow is not guaranteed let us know that god has got a future for each and every one of us and um he's gonna give us hope he will prosper you he's not here to harm you he's here to uh to make that which he has put inside of you uh, come into manifestation and when you pray to him he is there to listen to you while you are experiencing this season of delay wait on the lord quietly patiently be still and know that he is god learn to submit to god god loves a heart of obedience he does reward obedience the bible tells us it is for your own benefit that you submit under the mighty hand of God so if you find yourself today not liking the situation that you are in to do with delay etc etc I'd encourage you to drive to dive into the scripture and let God do the talking you may be going through a valley right now but tomorrow you'll be on top of the mountain so I encourage you that celebrate it you know celebrate the delay because you know God is always in control and to him a day is like a thousand years a, a thousand years is like a day so he will work everything everything you know for the good of those that are called according to his purpose so don't fret don't increase your stress levels don't get your high blood pressure to rise up don't lose your mind and pull your hair out you don't need that at this point you know um, give God the will and truly trust him and rest your hope in him to know that that delay in itself it is a blessing and because he loves you so much if it means pulling the brakes on you going the wrong direction then so be it and be content with it and enjoy your life goodness gracious don't just do it during christmas no you enjoy your life 2022 january all the way through to december because each and every day to god is a day that he's giving to each and every person enjoy it let god do the talking dive into his scripture and know that tomorrow you'll be able to thank him for the delay and say thank you god i might not have understood what you were doing a little while ago but i because i trusted you and because you are a god who is true I thank you now that i see because he will reveal it to you when the time is right 
and now see why this and that and something else had to happen and I thank you for it. So I would like to cut to encourage you and to challenge you tonight. Thank him already while you experienced in the delay. Praise him while you experienced in the delay. Worship him while you experienced in the delay. And thank him for the delay because you know that he will work it out for your good because he is a good God. God is so good. It's, it's, it's him. He is just goodness in itself, in his rawness. So be encouraged tonight that whatever it is that you may be going through, God has got the will and he wants nothing but the best. And the best thing you could ever do for yourself is to accomplish the will of the Father on earth as it is in heaven for your life. So be encouraged and thank you so much for tuning in on his commission tonight. Don't forget to check out our blog post every single Monday coming to you www.godsheart.co.za that's where you will catch them and also africa usa radio i am a presenter they catch me from monday through to friday from 5 p.m to 7 p.m central african time which is 10 a.m to 12 p.m eastern standard time on the burning bush with lady taban that is the name of my show there you'll get your daily dose of encouragement from the word of god and inspiration and get to enjoy an amazing selection of african gospel music straight from the continent of Africa. So God's heart is our mission. Stay blessed and I wish you nothing but a blessing throughout the course of the week in Christ Jesus.